Literally, do yeah. you know what came in my head? No, what came in your head? Ponies. Ponies? But I don't know why. why it's just say ponies? It's just I don't want ponies. I want to waste it away. <laughs> <laughs> why waste a wish? How could a pony be a waste of a wish? I don't know. Maybe I do want ponies. The answer is unicorns. It's just mm. always unicorns. Mm. I'm Shannon, and this is a special happy hour edition of School of Hustle. Today we have Garrett Breedenkamp, the CEO of Kombrucha. Cheers. Cheers. This is really good. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I do. You know what? I haven't historically considered myself a kombucha fan. Mm -hmm. And I'm not drinking kombucha right now. I'm drinking kombucha. Mm -hmm. Tell me really what is this product all about? So kombucha is a naturally fermented product that contains alcohol. Uh, the majority of the industry keeps that alcohol low, under half a percent. Uh, we heard from consumers that there was an opportunity to, uh, to provide like a fully alcoholic beverage that was not only you know, fun to socialize with, but also had all the health properties of kombucha. So you literally invented an entire category and a super flooded space. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's what's interesting about this is, uh, again, kombucha itself is one of the fastest growing functional beverages. So it's about a billion dollar category, uh, which is roughly the same size as uh, all um, like flavored malt beverages. So think like Mike's Hard Lemonade, all the seltzers, et cetera, like all of those together equal a billion dollars. So it's a great category. It's really quickly growing. Um, and so to be able to attach ourselves to that and have you understand already kombucha, I, I know what that is, it's easy for us to attach to that. From what I understand, yes. you did not start as a kombucha aficionado. You were an engineer at one point. Correct, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, my career has really led me to a, a variety of different paths. Um, I, I spent a, variety, a little bit of time in software startups. Um, I've done business school. Uh, I also worked for a consulting firm called McKinsey, uh, and it's there where I got involved in kind of the CPG landscape, and everything was going great there, but then I came across the co-founders of Kombrucha, Ariel and Barry, uh, and they kind of explained this inkling of an idea they had to me about creating a fully alcoholic kombucha. In marketing, it comes back to like, what are you trying to accomplish? Because you can't boil the ocean. Yeah. Like, you literally can't be all things to all people, right? So, yeah. number one, we, really did a lot of work to figure out who exactly we're trying to talk to, right? Who is our target demographic? So it turns out that um, the, the person, the core user of, of Kombrucha um, is, is a 25 to 40 year old female um, Ooh, who's, who's... That's me. <laughs> that's actually me. Who, uh, uh, barely, to be clear, barely. But it's still me. Then, then you're, then, so you're the person we're talking to. And, uh, and we got this, you know, through a bunch of interviews with people just like yourself. And, and someone who lives a balanced lifestyle, who yeah. is very active socially, who doesn't want to compromise really anything. They, they, yeah. Just like I'm sure you, you want to go out, you want to work out, you want to have yeah. fun, all that kind Absolutely. of stuff. So now we know who we're talking to, right? Then the other things that we need to do to really get this brand out there is raise awareness and to drive trial. So when you tried the product, that's when you became a believer. Mm -hmm. So we have to ask ourselves, how can we get the most people to try this? And so the strategy yeah. that we've taken is, one, concentrate on small markets. Uh, so we didn't try to go nationwide. We're only in New York and we're only in Miami. Was there ever a time when someone told you to do something and you did it and you found out that it was a bad piece of advice? I think uh, maybe maybe waiting as long as we did to okay. pivot to, to this full alcoholic kombucha. Uh, I think we always had the idea that it was gonna yeah. be the right thing to do. And, um, we, we just went a little bit too far in trying to over-verify it, right? Like, right. Um, the, the CEO for, for Kraft um, actually had a good quote, just like in the New York Times a couple days ago, where he said, like, if you can just get to 75% certainty, that's all you need. Because the, mm. the extra 25% is just insurance. That's so interesting. we should have moved when we had that 75%, and we were kind of trying to go for that ultimate sure thing. And, and in the end, you just got to go with it, you know, if you feel like you've got the base level of information. Yeah, it's I remember in my local Whole Foods, I walked in and someone kind of walked in with me and I was walking back to where our product is in the beer section and I was going to check on what was going on back there. The person, you know, walked in, 
made a beeline for this uh, Royal Ginger hard kombucha, like grabbed the four pack and just walked out. And I like did a double take and I like went and like tapped them and I was like, excuse me, sir, like, what are you, like, why, why are you doing this? Like, what's going on? Like, I just want to know, like, yeah. why you were so intent on kombucha. That's, that's and he crazy. was like, he's like, I love this, this is all I drink. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. So did, then- Did you tell him who you were? Yeah, afterwards okay. I was like, yeah, well, thank you. We appreciate it. But it's just crazy when you think that, that like, that's some random dude. Yeah. Who like, I'm, I, not, not me, the team, kombucha, yeah. is making his life better. He's like, this is all I drink. That's amazing. So it's really cool. I, that's, an, that's an amazing made it moment. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, so that, that, was, that was very cool. But we have a lot of those cool. to, to go before we're, we're done with this thing. But. When we mentioned to our tribe in social that you would be here, we did get a question from one of our tribe members, Nerdsy. And Nerdsy is really wondering how you get the public behind you. I think number one is like knowing that, especially at an early stage with limited resources like we have, the public is not the right target. Um, we're not trying to create a mass movement at this point. Okay. We believe that that will come, right. but the way to do that is to really get a small group of people really passionate about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned like your tribe. Yeah. Um, so when we think about our marketing efforts, largely we're not thinking about the public. We're thinking about Liza and Kristen who are yeah. our caricatures for our core consumer. Um, and so we want to get them very excited. So that's the first thing we have to understand like who we're trying to talk to. Um, and then the second thing is, is like, it's, you know, it's not rocket science, but it's like picking where you want to make your mark. And so we have chosen, we really want to make our mark in store. Uh, we really want to make our mark by being at places where Liza and Kristen are likely to be and get them to try it. So we're talking about partnerships with SoulCycle. Um, oh. Things with uh, doing like partnerships and samplings at Lululemon exclusive shopping, uh, and even like Bandier and other more like boutique type of offerings. Um, so really, just trying to be at the places where Liza and Kristen shop, work, and play, uh, and get them aware of the products and get them uh, turned on to the product, and ultimately, hopefully, get them to try the product. Right. And we know from our research that if we can do that. Yeah. We're going to convert a fair amount of those people. And then to back to the question about getting the public excited, if we can get them using the product here in New York and in Miami and in our expansion markets, uh, then that will then snowball into like a broader, a broader uh, movement, I guess. But that's we for where we are now, we can't afford to do like a nationwide yeah. advertising campaign. So we have to start with our core users. I think that's great. I, I love that focus. Yeah. Now, we've definitely learned a lot today and, and I, I certainly have so much enjoyed learning about your business and what you're doing. I think it's fantastic. Um, I would like to, however, learn more about you okay. and play a game. Okay. Let's do it. I love this game. Let's the do game it. is called Hustle Time. You get 60 seconds on the clock. And I am going to ask you rapid fire style a question and you answer it as quickly as you can. Now okay. you can think about the question and belabor the question, but that is costing time. Okay. And you want to try to get through as many cards as yeah. possible. Here, go ahead and give it a shuffle or cut the deck. I want you to feel like the deck is fair. All right. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. If you could go back in time, Benjamin who would you Franklin. want to meet? Most irrational fear. Snakes. If a genie granted you three wishes, what would you wish for? Uh, uh, unlimited steak. And, uh, and more a plane steak? and a sailboat. Snapchat has a long life or is a lost cause? Uh, don't care. Camping or glamping? Uh, camping. Karaoke is about talent or commitment? Commitment. Heart. Describe yourself in three words. Uh, fun, outgoing, uh, 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 humble. Number one guilty pleasure? Probably not. What? Uh, number one guilty pleasure? <laughs> uh, Moana. Currently. <laughs> First celebrity crush. Uh, what was her name? Um, uh, Alicia Silverstone. First concert you ever saw? Uh, Kenny G. New York tourist. Help with directions or keep on your own way? Help with directions. First record you bought with your own money? Uh, Taylor Swift, 1989. Coffee or tea? A coffee. Favorite Disney movie? Again, Moana. Binge watch or watch weekly? Uh, binge watch. Favorite breakfast food? Eggs. Last person you texted? Uh, my coworker Laura. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. New York or London? New York. Ah! What do we get? <laughs> How many? I think we only got like 16. The moment of truth. Okay, let's go. One, One. two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, oh, nineteen. Oh, I stumbled on the genie question. I know. That was the one that got me. That's a hard one. That's a tough card to pull because you have to say three things. Yeah, yeah, I messed that one up. That's okay, and also, though. also the three qualities about my like it's it's weird when you want to like talk about yourself. I know. It's yeah. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was anyway, fun. Anyway, that, that, that that's was why fun. I tripped up because that was the first thing about my was and I, I If you like, notice, so I tried to speed up. I guess we got. I was I was trying to like help you yeah. pick up some time there. But yeah, hey, yeah, nice yeah. job. Give me a high okay, five. It was good. That was very. It good. was good. Yeah. You did great. No, thank you. That was. It was great. I thought it was great. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. And I, I just, I really appreciate you, you being here and, and opening up and sharing so much with us. I'm wondering, you know, though, you have to before, this, oh, way, I, yeah. really, yeah. thank you. Before, before we really say goodbye, I, I would love you for you to share some advice to everybody. Just the last thoughts, you know, Ooh. I mean, what would your last piece of advice be to everybody who's watching? The piece of advice that I, that I try to use every day that I think has led to the most success for me in my career and with Kombucha uh, was, was given to me by a mentor I had at a software startup about eight years ago. Um, and it's, it's control the controllables. Oh. So um, in, like in, in, in every situation, there's so many things out of your control, but there are always things that you can control to, uh, to, to, to influence the situation so that it comes out how you want it to. So we use it. We use this every day. We use it like right now. We're having like, honestly, we're having kind of a little bit of a uh, of an issue with uh, some of our pr uh, production processes, and we we can't necessarily control what's going on, but we can control how often we measure. We can control uh, how we deal with uh, the process around it. You know, right. things like that. And with customers as well, it's like I can't control if if a bar is going to purchase our product, but I can control how many people go into that bar and ask for the product, right? I can yeah. control uh, how well we present and how well equipped our sales reps are to go in and present to that bar owner. So I it's like just that. control, it's just like a lot of things and I don't know, I think about it all the time, control the controllables. Thank you to everybody for watching. This has been another fabulous episode of School of Hustle. So how much more fun has this one been because you're drinking <laughs> kombucha than, than <laughs> others? Now, you, I, I won't make you answer that because then that's not nice mm. to the other participants, but no, this love, one has I been a lot question. of fun. No, I, I love the question. This has been the most fun School of Hustle. What? It's the happy yeah. hour. It's the happy yes. hour version. There we go. That's a win. I, and I, to be fair, I have never even had this product before. Uh -huh. You have introduced me. You have done a taste test right now with your Target demo. There we go. I, I really, I have really enjoyed the product. product. I have awesome. especially enjoyed talking with you. Very cool. Well, you can get it at Whole Foods, Trader yeah. Joe. Let me do my sales pitch. Yeah. <laughs> no. We'll put a number on Select the screen. Select retailers yeah, all over the exactly. city. Target, Whole, exactly. Whole Foods, Trader Joe's. <laughs> Only in New York and Miami for now, but soon, yeah. soon coming yeah. to to other well, places in the country. I'm excited to keep watching you. Yeah, I'm excited to see what fall flavors pop up. And, and thanks again for being here. We really yeah. got a lot out of this. Thank Definitely. you. Definitely. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Um, I'm 23 years old. Uh, it's my first job out of college. I, I worked for ExxonMobil. I was an engineer. Okay. Um, basically, the opposite of an entrepreneur at, at that point. But uh, I had my boss, my boss's boss in town, for my first big customer dinner. Right. So picture a nice steakhouse and like a U booth. And there's eight people, and I'm in the middle, and I'm just like doing my thing. You know, like conducting everything, making sure everybody's happy, like being a great technical salesperson, like I was. Uh, so I get my steak, I take my first bite, and I'm like, oh, this is going so well, and I'm chewing, I'm chewing, I'm chewing. And I'm like trying to breathe, and I'm realizing that I can't because it's stuck in my throat. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it. So then I, I go to take a glass of water, you know, maybe I can get it out. So I take the water, and the water's just like in my mouth, and I can't like do anything. So then I legit like universal choking signal, <laughs> like the movies. Yeah. My, the VP of the whole division, my boss's boss, yeah. is like, are you choking? And I'm like, yeah. So he gets out, we, everyone scoots out of the booth, because it's like a booth, <laughs> scoots out, 
in the middle of like the, in the middle of the restaurant, Mrs. Doubtfire style, like gives me the hot uh -huh. maneuver. Yeah. In, in the in the whole yeah. restaurant, everyone claps. <laughs> everyone claps. Well, you know what's interesting? Okay, so I love this because in New York City, the the reason why you have to post the picture of the Heimlich maneuver sign in every restaurant is because this was years ago. The mayor of New York was choking on a pork chop. Really? And somebody in the restaurant saved his life. There and you so go. Now that that poster is ever because of that. I mean, it is real. I've I've choked myself. Yeah. I've done I've done something similar. Yeah. And. It's a horrible feeling. It's the worst. What I have to ask you though is, did you continue to eat the rest of the steak? No, did not. Did you I did it? No, I did not eat the rest of the steak. I was totally scarred, but I did finish the business meal as awkward as that was. You finished the presentation. We, we, fin we finished the everyone, meal. Everyone huddled thing. back in the booth. Yeah, and it was so awkward. It was so <laughs> awkward. But what's funny about that is like, I, I think about that and I'm like, sometimes you think that this thing, everything is going on is so important, right? Yeah. But then it's like, yeah, the most important thing is to like keep yourself alive, like chew, <laughs> well, your, chew your food. Yes, then there's that. So uh, <laughs> it helps like put things in perspective sometimes. If you think like, yeah. if you think like things are going bad, it's like, what? At least I'm not choking. On my That's steak. amazing. So, I love that. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shannon Truex. Hit to subscribe, and all of your entrepreneurial goals will come true. That is, if your goals are to see more of Noodle and watch more episodes of School of Hustle.